looking at your pictures, they're very intimate shots of these large cats. We get very close, but we've made predators out to be deadly animals. Mm. And that, that's kind of cheeky coming from the most evolved predator mm. on the planet, you know, so which is us humans. But they have no desire to hurt us unless it's an accidental situation. Now, you've so. set up these camera traps, these they're little sort of like cars, like um, exactly. Mikado well, well, or, you know, cars. One of them's a car and the other ones are just cameras and waterproof boxes and I use infrared beams to when the animal breaks the beam the camera takes a photograph and that was done to do snow leopards because you'll never see them so I was walking around either in locations where they mark their territory or then on trails where I could get a big landscape picture of all the Himalayas in the background and tell myself I would take a photograph from here. Mm. There happens to be a trail there with snow leopard tracks. Let's put a remote camera. Their level, I level to the cat. So you're not above them the right? way. Right, you don't take away their power. The same reason when you, we photograph kids, we get on our knees eye to eye. Mm. So you're eye to eye with the animal. You have your location set up and then I light it, and it's kind of like a stage set or a movie cell. I'm just waiting for the actor to walk oh, on stage. Oh, so you've lit around those little right. magnets. Ah. Oh. Because if it comes when there's a shadow of a mountain there, I don't want a silhouette. I want to see the cat. So but doesn't that put them off? For some reason, they, they don't react, and there's no way we can ask them, why doesn't that flash bother you? Yes. And is it kind of like lightning, you know, or something? But oh, I, see. I will have... The cat in L.A. stopped, uh, the one that I was getting under the Hollywood sign. When I just got the picture of L.A. in the background, he stopped in the same spot for all 10 frames. But after that, he wouldn't even look at the camera. It's like, uh, <laughs> done that, be I'm, there. I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> I have to go find dinner. <laughs> so do you think that the arrival of technology, because we talked about this with yeah. David Dublé, has it really changed your world then? Uh, do, do you accept that, that you're a different photographer? A hundred percent, and there's no way I could do really what I do if I didn't have... Uh, I couldn't call it instant gratification because, like, the Hollywood Cougar shot gave me information for 15 months until I got the photograph. My God. You know, there's some is images that, how, that have... Is that you know, an average length or was that a... No, I thought snow leopards was bad four to six months, but I knew that was going to be difficult. But the bottom line is my goal is to get images that people haven't seen before and light them in a way that they actually look unreal. We're bombarded with images, especially with smartphones, our tablets, mm. from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed. We're constantly flipping through images. If I can get somebody to stop and look at something or even say, oh, that looks fake. I love it because that means you just spent 10 seconds longer on that image, even processing the fact that you thought it looked fake than you would on a normal photograph. To engage the viewer, to give them a reason to care and give them a reason to investigate further about whatever cat I'm working on at the time. I'm really intrigued to hear this because I would have expected the polar opposite drive yeah. from you. Yeah. Uh, you know, that it was like absolute realism. It is real, but I do it in a way people aren't used to being eye to eye with one of these animals. So oh. these camera traps help me to bring this intimacy to these images. And just the way I light them, it's something yeah, I did. Yeah, then you're really known for your lighting, aren't well, you? Well, I did it by accident just because on snow leopards, I could not miss one frame. If that dude came by at noon or midnight, I had to have that picture. Now, we only had one image at night. It was a snow leopard in a snowstorm, and I won BBC Wildlife Photographer of the Year for that. I want those images to be like if I was lying on the ground taking the picture myself, that's the time of day and the lighting I would have used, except if I'm there, the cat's never gonna come by because he's gonna smell me and I'll go a different direction. Yeah.